I'm Dr. Steve Claypool and I'm going to review the medical evidence on saturated fat. For 30 years, national dietary guidelines have recommended reducing consumption of saturated fat intake with the goal of reducing cardiovascular disease. Yet we now know that saturated fat is not the evil nutrient we were taught. The biggest sources of saturated fat in the U.S. diet come from cheese, especially from pizza, milk, butter, ice cream and desserts, meat products of all types, and Mexican food. These foods are not all the same, so it isn't useful to broadly classify them as sources of saturated fat. Nevertheless, we're forced to review the literature by viewing them as saturated fats instead of individual foods, because that's how fats have been studied for decades. When I'm done, though, I'm going to bring my summary back to individual foods. In the 1990s, we started tracking detailed observational trials. Very detailed food and lifestyle diaries allowed us to collect data on many different risk factors so we can compare groups that are seemingly equal except for saturated fat consumption. For example, we can compare people that are fat, don't smoke, don't exercise, eat the same numbers of fruits and vegetables, and are otherwise the same except one group eats a lot of fat and the other doesn't. Fast forward to 2010 after we've been following these people for many years. This meta-analysis of 21 prospective studies covers about 350,000 people. There was no difference in the incidence of cardiovascular disease compared to groups with a low saturated fat intake to high saturated fat intake. Jumping forward to 2015, this study analyzed multiple observational trials in a slightly different way and now looked at death, not just cardiovascular disease. Saturated fat intake was not associated with all-cause death or death from cardiovascular disease. There is inherent uncertainty in attempting to study a macronutrient. We don't eat just saturated fat, we eat foods that contain fat but also contain many other substances. Lumping these disparate foods together when studying fat causes problems. And it turns out that there is this study that has helped point out that we shouldn't attempt to study nutrients in isolation. This is a meta-analysis of 26 studies that was able to assess the risk of disease in foods with a lot of saturated fat by comparing specific foods. Milk, cheese, butter, and yogurt were not associated with all-cause death or death from heart disease. Whereas meats and processed meats were strongly associated with both all-cause mortality and death from heart disease. Duh. We already knew the toxins from meats cause death. It's probably not the fat content in the meats that is the culprit. Back to the food scale. I need to consolidate some of the foods to make room. And I'm going to list the specific foods instead of saturated fat because listing macronutrients makes no sense. There is a little more information to consider for dairy products that I'll review in the future in specific videos, for example diabetes, but for now these foods are neutral and it doesn't matter if we're talking about whole milk dairy products or skim versions. And palm and coconut oil, which are very high in saturated fat, go here too, but I'm not including them because they're not eaten commonly enough to warrant a spot on my chart. What about eggs? They don't have much fat, but they have a lot of cholesterol. One meta-analysis suggested a modest risk for cardiovascular disease. Another meta-analysis suggested no risk, and a third more recent study suggested that accurate analysis of the data isn't yet possible because of a variety of reasons. Basically, we need more research. As of now, eggs are either neutral or possibly slightly unhealthful. Time and more studies will give us the final answer. They certainly aren't the evil food they were once portrayed to be. Being a neutral food, it could be unhealthy to replace saturated fats with some choices. On the other hand, it could be healthy to replace saturated fat with other choices. Let's look at the data and decide which substitutions make the most sense. This study of 11 prospective cohort trials compared those that ate saturated fats with other groups. Other foods and lifestyle factors were controlled for. People that consumed PUFAs instead of saturated fat had less cardiovascular disease, whereas those that consumed simple carbohydrates rather than saturated fat had slightly more cardiovascular disease. In the PUFA group, omega-3 PUFAs are associated with better outcomes than omega-6 PUFAs, that is, fish and nuts instead of safflower oil. And although there isn't as much data on MUFAs as a group, there is a lot of data on olive oil. This is again the reason macronutrient organization is confusing and dumb. So let me spell it out with specific recommendations. The commonly consumed foods with saturated fats, milk, cheese, butter, cream, are neither bad nor good for you. Eggs are also fairly neutral. There is no reason to limit your consumption of these foods. Meats are bad for you, as previously reviewed, but probably not because of the saturated fat. So it would obviously make no sense to substitute a meal of butter, cream, and greasy cheese with lean beef. That would be dumb. Do not eat a low-fat diet and substitute the saturated fats with simple carbohydrates, like pasta, bread, rice, and sugar. 
If you are going to limit your butter, cream, and cheese, then replace them with fish, olive oil, and nuts. This makes sense regardless of official statements about saturated fat. 